Rub up your engines! Late like model Hondas, the paint is peeling off a bunch of them. I got a customer with a 2018 Honda Accord. The paint is peeling off of it. Took it to the dealer. They tried to blame it on parking under trees, which he didn't do. Tried to blame it on acid rain. They have a three year warranty on those things, but they're being real stinkers about covering this damage. As far as I'm concerned, Honda. It's always been somewhat low. Over the ages, I have many customers with Hondas that the paint, especially the clear coat, would peel off. Now, a few years back, Honda came up with a new process, and it cut out one of the steps that they normally did in painting cars, which to me is a mistake. All cars, practically these days, mass produced ones, are using water based paint because it gets brownie points with the pollution control guys. But water based paints generally do not hold up all that well. And obviously, Honda has a problem. I've read about hundreds of people that have had the same exact problem. A car that's a year, year and a half old, and the paint's peeling off of it. Obviously, they're not making these things right. That's one big reason I'm not a fan of this water-based paint stuff. You take my wife's old Lexus. It may be 18 years old, but the paint looks like new. Because it was an oil-based paint, the stuff holds up better. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The world goes on. They want you to keep buying things as they fall apart with planned obsolescence. But really, I think twice before I'd buy a late model Honda if the paint's peeling off already when they're a year, year and a half old. The 11 of clubs. I see a lot of people driving big time cars. How do they do it? Are dealerships financing them? There's a lot of rich people in the world. There is no arguing that. A while back, Porsche decided they were going to make a supercar and it was going to list for about a million dollars. And they decided they were going to make a thousand of them. Well, usually supercars, they make 50, 80, 100 or something. And all the other guys thought, ah, Volkswagen owns Porsche now. They're idiots. They think they can mass produce supercars and make a thousand of them. Guess what? They had all 1,000 of these cars that were like a million bucks a piece sold before they even built one. There's that many rich people on the planet. And see what's happening is there seems to be more rich people and a whole bunch more poor people and we middle class people are being shrunk down you know uh, I think people need to fight against that that's uh, you know it's the middle class that has been the backbone of this country throughout history and this you know glorification of the rich is a bunch of nonsense as far as I'm concerned Jake I'm looking to upgrade my 2002 Ford Escape I bought it used lasted me about seven years I did some research between the RAV4 Equinox and Honda CRV what should I get well forget the Chevy those are piles of junk the RAV4 and the CRVs are both excellent vehicles you kind of decide which one do you like better. If you have any choice at all, I would go for either of them that did not have constantly variable CVT transmission. I don't like those things. If you can get a regular one or a standard transmission, I'd either go ahead. But I'm not a CVT fan of either the Honda or the Toyota. But let's say they both are CVT transmissions. I would definitely go Toyota versus Honda on a CVT transmission. But I tried not to get it in either. I don't like the CVT transmissions. Mr. V Gamer says, how do I tell if I need to replace spark plugs? All right, spark plugs wear from a combination of electrical wear and chemical wear of the reaction of the spark plug to gasoline blowing. So as spark plugs wear, the gap between the electrode that you can check with a little gauge gets wider. Once it gets to be 30-40% more than the original gap, let's say the gap is 0.4, yours is 0 0.06, well then it's time to change it. Or if they're carboned up every once in a couple of years or something, if it still runs good, just pull them out, check them, and if they're not covered with burnt carbon and the gap isn't that bad, you can leave them alone. Especially like if you have iridium spark plugs. I have seen cars with iridium spark plugs that had 175,000 miles, never been touched, and they still ran fine. They had to lay it anywhere because iridium doesn't wear much. That's why they use it. Andres Leon says, hey, Scotty, I need a new alternator, best auction. Napa, AutoZone, or Denso Remanufactured. Out of those, I'd go for the Denso Remanufactured. Manufacturers. They seem to do a pretty good job, those Densos. Or if you're like me and you live near an auto zone and you get a lifetime warranty, ah, oh, what the heck? Because the auto zone warranties are nationwide. So all you use is your phone number. And if you had it and the alternator went bad and you're on vacation, you just have to go to the nearest auto zone. They'll give you another one. It, their guarantees are really good. I, I did that once. I went down to Corpus, one went out, and uh, they gave me a free one because I just gave my phone number. So.
Nothing wrong with that either. Chaz Worm says, Ice Age or Global Warming? It's all BS to justify taxing the hell out of us. <laughs> I was on my PhD before I got married. I was interested in all kinds of stuff. Geology is one of my favorites, right? They're still arguing, the scientists, whether we are coming out of an ice age or going into an ice age. Let's say we're coming out of an ice age. The glaciers are naturally going to retreat. I mean, I've seen parts of Texas that had glaciers on them a long time ago. You can see the glacial moraines and stuff. Maybe it was melting anyways. Now, certainly, people's effect of all the carbon dioxide they're pumping in the atmosphere has some effect, and it's probably getting warmer faster than it was going to get warming. But people are still arguing, the scientists, whether we're coming out of an ice age or going to an ice age. And people say, the glaciers are melting, the glaciers are melting. Well, they've always been melting. They're either melting or they're growing. They're doing one or the other. They never say stationary, so nobody really knows, you know, which way it is one way or the other. I mean, scientifically, uh, obviously, we're making it get a little bit hotter, but it's not as simple as somebody might think it is. But if anybody says we're not affecting it at all, they're idiots. Of course, we're affecting it. I mean, we're burning all kinds of stuff all over the place. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.